And now we're going to take a little look at carboxylic acids. And from a synthesis standpoint, carboxylic acids are supremely important in this chapter. So uh, we've learned that all the different carboxylic acids derivatives, we can interconvert them all, and that's new. But you learned a lot of old ways to make carboxylic acids. You know very uh, great number of ways to make carboxylic acid that you've learned previously, you know very few ways to make any of the other carboxylic acid derivatives. So in terms of synthesis, your way of making any of the carboxylic acid derivatives is often through a carboxylic acid. And so we're going to go back and review some of the old ways, uh, but really focus on a couple new ways as well. So uh, first off, you learned uh, ozonolysis. Both of alkenes and alkynes can be used to make carboxylic acids. And when you do it with alkenes, you just want to make sure you do it under oxidizing conditions using peroxide in step two. Uh, you can also uh, oxidize primary alcohols and aldehydes. So initially the primary alcohol turns into an aldehyde and it gets further oxidized and that's why you can just simply oxidize the aldehyde with chromic acid here as well. And you guys also learned the Bayer-Villiger oxidation when you start with an aldehyde will also oxidize it to a carboxylic acid as well. Um, more recently we've learned side chain oxidation of benzenes. You can oxidize the benzylic carbons as long as they have a hydrogen uh, with potassium permanganate. So, and chromic acid turns out would work as well, FYI. Um, and so these are all review. What I do want to focus on now, though, is these two right here, because these two are new to this chapter. So I'm not going to take a lot of time and go over all the old ones and stuff like that. They're review. You can look them up. Uh, but the two new ones are what I want to talk about now. So the first new way to make a carboxylic acid is the hydrolysis of nitriles. And uh, in this case, we're going to look at specifically at the acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Base catalysis is also possible, uh, but it's just much less common, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it. But with the acid catalyzed version here, uh, keep in mind that the nitrile here is a carboxylic acid derivative. And every single carboxylic acid derivative, if you add H3O plus to them, you will indeed get a carboxylic acid. So just as a reminder, uh, if you look at this, the kind of the way this works, we're going to pro the nitrogen and then we'll attack the carbon with a water molecule and you can kind of see how this ultimately ends up forming the amide and then because you're under conditions of H3O plus uh, aqueous acid and heat the amide then further reacts to turn into a carboxylic acid so uh, I'm not going to go through this mechanistically and stuff like that the mechanism uh, from just the amide of the carboxylic acid is one of those six step acid catalyzed mechanisms uh, and then getting there would be another few steps as well so not the most likely mechanism you're, you're going to see just because of the sheer number of steps uh, but similar to what you've seen in terms of protonations and deprotonations, but another one of those ugly acid catalyzed mechanisms. And finally, the other new way to make a carboxylic acid is uh, Grignard addition to carbon dioxide. And we've seen Grignard addition to ketones and aldehydes, and in this chapter, acid chlorides, acid and hydrides, and esters. Uh, but this one's very unique. In, in this case, we're going to add it to a carbon oxygen double bond still, but of CO2. And so we're going to come and attack the carbonyl. We'll kick these electrons out. So, and that's simply just going to form a carboxylate here. And that's what we do the acid workup step. The acid workup step is simply just going to protonate it and get us our product. So we're still reacting a Grignard reagent with a carbonyl, just a very unique carbonyl in this case. And so uh, generally you'll have an alkyl halide, you add your magnesium well, along with either ether or THF to make your Grignard, and then you just add CO2 and you end up with a carboxylic acid with one additional carbon. So really useful from a synthesis standpoint, great new way to make a carboxylic acid. So now we'll turn our attention to the reactions of carboxylic acids. And uh, carboxylic acids are acids, so we're not going to have to worry about reacting them with uh, organometallics. Uh, if we react them with a, an organometallic, they would just do an acid-base reaction. You just deprotonate the carboxylic acid, and it's not the most synthetically useful thing in the world. Uh, but we can talk about hydride reductions. And here again, we'll use lithium aluminum hydride, just like we have been for the whole chapter. Uh, and we can reduce this all the way to the alcohol. Uh, and it looks like we're just, you know, doing this twice. You know, we're going to place the OH with an H and make an aldehyde. So, and then reduce that down to an alcohol. Well, it turns out the mechanism is completely different. I mentioned that earlier. And I'm not going to go through the mechanism. It's not one you're likely to be responsible for. And if you are, my apologies. Um, but in this case, it will still reduce it all the way down to an alcohol, similar to what we've seen with the other carboxylic acid derivatives. I do want to again point out, though, that BH3THF, so if we use borane, uh, is selective for a carboxylic acid, whereas LAH will d reduce everything. Uh, borane, I should say, uh, will reduce selectively the carbonyl of a, uh, of a carboxylic acid to an alcohol. 
Finally, the last set of reactions for the carboxylic acid uh, are just all the interconversions amongst all the carboxylic acid derivatives. And we can turn it into an ester since they're equally reactive. We can turn it into an amide, which is less reactive, or into a carboxylate, which is more reactive. But we cannot turn it into an anhydride. But if you recall, this was one of the rare times where we can do an uphill reaction and make the acid chloride either using SOCl2 or the acid bromide using PBr3. So a couple unique things here. So one of the things to note, uh, with the carboxylic acid, you can't really do any base catalyzed reactions. And it's not entirely true. There are a few things we could do in the, in the lab and stuff, but nothing you're gonna see presented in the curriculum here. Um, but if you did an acid-base reaction, all that would happen. Anything involving a basic solution would just immediately convert your carboxylic acid into a carboxylate. And at that point, you're pretty much done. And again, there really are technically a couple exceptions to this, but none we're going to present here in the curriculum.